Then finally, in this results table, I've got a couple of things that I don't need. First of all, I know I don't have any group information. I just eliminated the group section from another portion of the template, so I don't need a group column. So if I highlight the group column or click on it, it becomes a dark gray outline group column. Now I can right mouse click on it, and since I happen to be in too much of a rush and I'm clicking too quickly, I go to the delete. And uh-oh, all of a sudden I've just not only deleted that one column, I've deleted that entire section inside of that group. But don't worry, Agilent has given you a get out of jail free card because you will see immediately below where it says in the upper ribbon in that um, right hand window, it says report editor dash short underscore ESTD underscore letter dot RDL. Unless you were looking for it, you might miss that underneath the I in the report editor, there is a little backward facing arrow. Click on that backward facing arrow and that will bring back for you the last thing that you just did, which was accidentally you deleted that entire table instead of just deleting one column. It's also a multi-point one, so if you had done other things in the past, like if you didn't want that group uh, to disappear, that group section uh, or the summary section, you could continue clicking the undo and it would reimpose those in this uh, template. It goes back to the last saved portion of the template. Since we haven't saved or overwritten this template, we can go all the way back to when we first opened it up as the short underscore EST under underscore letter. But for now, we just wanted to do the single point, the single step back, re-highlight that group column, and then right mouse click and realize that the delete comes before the delete column, which is the one that we want to do because they're in alphabetical order. So click on the delete column instead, and that one column now disappears. The next thing we want to do is we do not have any dilution or mul multiplication factors in this set of data. So I want to highlight the concentration column, right mouse click, and delete that column as well. I would like to now add two additional columns to this set of data. The first one, is I'd like to add my peak area percent, but not from the custom calculation that we did before. Instead, I want it to come natively from the, uh, from the software package itself. What's the difference? There is absolutely no difference except the way it gets incorporated into the table, and I'm going to show, that, show you that right now. So if I would like the peak area percent column put into my table, and in my example, I would like to have the peak area percent immediately to the right of the area column. I'm going to highlight the area column. It is now a dark gray background. I'm going to right mouse click on that area percent column and go down to where it says about 60% through those menus. Insert column to the right. Click on that insert column to the right. And that column is going to go down to the peak and all the way up to area percent and click on area percent. And it immediately populates for me the peak area percent column immediately to the right of the area column. But unfortunately, it has populated it with, with an enormous name to the column. So it's probably going to wrap and I don't want it to wrap. So to fix that, I'm going to click on the area percent, peak area percent column, right mouse click on that column, and go down to about two-thirds of the way down on those menus and select column properties, column properties. Not all the way down to properties, select column properties. In this column properties, I'm going to go down to the header format, and I, oh, excuse me, I'm going to go down to the value here, and on the right-hand side, there is header text, and notice that it has the entire header text 
all spelled out. Peak, space, area, space, percent. That's going to wrap. So immediately to the right of that header text and that text box, there is an FX, which is the formula that's used to create that header text. Click on that FX and it opens up an editable field. Now remember, this is just a header. So I can use not only alphanumeric text, but I can use special characters. So the first thing I'm going to do is eliminate that percent name, and I'm going to use the Shift-5 key, which is my percent symbol instead. And since I know area percent is always peak area percent, it's kind of redundant to have that peak in there. So I am also going to eliminate that peak at the beginning of the area percent, and I'm only going to show the header of that column as area percent. And then click one single OK here. Do not click the next OK to get back out to the template. Because before we do that, I don't want to change anything with the value because that is the formula for creating the value on those peak area percents. But maybe I would like to make sure that the peak area percents are coming up to, if not exactly 100%, really close to 100%. Well, in order to do that, on the left-hand side of the column properties where it has that black panel, Go down to the third from the bottom where it says Summary Calculations and click on the Summary Calculations. And then activate the check mark immediately to the left of the sum underneath Selected Summary Calculations or Select Summary Calculations. There is a sum that's there. Click that checkbox and then click OK. It will now activate that sum for that area percent column. Now, if I would like to go ahead and view this, um, this template, because I've made some changes in the template, then in order to view everything, I'm going to go to my preview in the layouts up above, select the preview, and notice that when I select a preview, it gives me a completely blank screen. That's because in order to see the data that I have highlighted on the left-hand panel, I have to refresh that preview. So select that Refresh Preview in the upper ribbon, and it will now show me my modified template. It has on the right-hand panel, Rich's Fun Report is the name. It's got my Acme Lab logo as my logo. <clears throat> it has my Sample instead of sample name as the name of the field, the very first field. It's got my isocratic sample STD in bold along with a uh, thistle background. Then I've got my chromatogram and then some tabulated sets of results down below, including the area percent column that I just added along with the sum of that area percent column. 